Hello YouTube, uh, welcome to the inaugural edition of Locked Out. Uh, I'm not going to be picking a lock in this video, I'll do that in the next video where I'll demonstrate the use of these tools, but in this first video I just want to go over you know, the tools that, I, that I'm using and uh, you know, a little bit about how I made them and from what. This right here is my first tool. This was the first one I made. It's made out of a bobby pin, and I took and I sanded down, you know, from about here all the way out. And then, uh, you know, I, of course I got me a pair of these and a pair of ice grips, and I bent it on the uh, on the difficult end, you know, not bending it the easy way on the flat side, but bending it on the uh, on the stiff side here on the narrow end um, this is the first lock pick that I made and I made it to pick a specific lock that I'll be demonstrating in my next video um, but this didn't actually end up cutting it uh, but I think this is probably not too bad for a, a first tool you know uh, I even went to the trouble of planing off the top of it here and making it you know, a little bit more friendly to hang on to pins this is my tension wrench and I made this out of one of these which is a PC uh, back slot cover you know a PCI slot cover this th this obviously this wasn't made out of this particular one um, but this is something like it just so I can show you what kind of metal it is it looks like it's about a sixteenth inch thick sheet steel and uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's pretty stiff and if you take a pair of these, and you might think these are garden shears, but they're not. You can tell uh, because of how much leverage is being put in, how far back these are, etc., etc. This thing is actually really strong, and it has no problem cutting through 16th inch thick steel. So if you don't have tin snips or metal shears, uh, I don't recommend really trying to do this unless you can figure out a way to, you know, maybe dremel it or something like that. Um, you'll notice that this has a curve in it. It's it's curved. That was a consequence of how I cut it out, and initially I didn't really like that. But it turns out to be a really good thing. I'm thinking maybe more tension wrenches might might could use this because this is actually very comfortable. Especially I've got rather large hands. Um, this is comfortable to use because no matter which end, whether you're doing top of keyway or bottom of keyway, if you're right-handed, you can hold this in your left hand and use your right hand to manipulate the lock. And if you're left-handed, you can hold it in your left hand and use your, or you hold it in your right hand and use your left hand to manipulate the lock. You know, I'm like George Bush. Sometimes the uh, right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. And, and anyway, <laughs> uh, I bent the ends in the same direction to give me, uh, uh, you know, the same direction of tension pretty much no matter which hand I'm holding this in. Uh, I also made these kind of shallow just because uh, it seems efficient to me. It doesn't seem like it would be good to shove something all the way down into the into the uh, keyway if you don't need to. Uh, also, I've made them two different widths. This is the wide end for top of keyway, and this is the bo this is the narrow end for bottom of keyway. And that uh, about half of the design of this thing was purely by accident. The other half was a little, little bit inspired creativity. And uh, this is the second lock pick I made because one of the problems I was having with this one is that I just didn't really have enough to really grip onto here. So for those of you who've got time down, you'll recognize this trick right here. Of course, I'm sure most of you with time down are used to seeing things like this with a razor blade in the end. Well, this isn't a razor blade, obviously. It's just another bobby pin. And I used this toothbrush plastic because it's really nice and malleable at relatively low temperatures. You just get this uh, 
heat it up and you know hold it in a tool like vice grips or you know those dikes I just showed you and when this end is hot you know through flame or maybe heated up on the stove or something just jam it straight into the plastic and if you put a few burrs in it uh, it'll make it to where once it gets inside the handle it'll stay and it'll be really uh, I mean it's really in there it's not going anywhere it doesn't wobble or nothing and this handle is nice and wide and it's got this little ergonomic curve and stuff like that so I can so I can sit here and you know just do this all day and it has really good feedback uh, because of the you know the little wings on the edge of this handle it's it's a uh, kind of oblong in cross section anyway those are the tools uh, some of the locks we're going to be looking at eventually are here in the frame including this one here uh, I was actually surprised by by this is a this is a plastic bodied master lock but it's actually better than my first pick which is uh, this one here it's a master number 140 it's got security pins in it but so does this one <laughs> uh, this one is harder though because it's a five pin lock um, got this ace lock up here we're going to be taking a look at it eventually and we got something down here that has I mean I don't have the key for this but the key for it would look something like this even though uh, this is not a master lock uh, this one here is probably the most bitch made lock up here it's a chateau I think it's uh, either a four or five pin lock but there are no security anything in this so maybe maybe uh, I should have started with that but I, I didn't I started with this this was my first lock and uh, you know in my next video I'll be you walking you through picking this and uh, well that's uh, that's uh, about it